everybody and welcome back to my channel. So first up, like it's been a while since I made a video, granted. Um, I don't know if it's like coronavirus, just like the atmosphere, it's just made me so so tired lately. Um, but yeah, I'm back um, and I've got some awesome things to show you. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the bell. Do you remember when I said the Rasa was big? This is big. I think this is actually bigger than the Rasa. Yeah, it's an absolute beast. It's the Altair 130 EDTF telescope. Obviously my favourite design, which is a refractor. So yeah, I'm going to be using this for solar, lunar, planetary, deep sky, the lot. So shall we have a look around it? I've popped it on the sofa because I'm a bit scared of dropping it but yeah I've just extended the dew shield and as you can see it's pretty pretty big quite an impressive piece of kit to be honest see it comes with a lost mandy bar which is definitely needed I put it on my EQ6R this morning and yeah if it had been on a Vixen bar, I think I would have been a bit worried. But yeah, it's on a on a Lost Mandy, so there's plenty of like surface area for the mount saddle to grip. It's also got a dual speed focuser, and that is a giant focuser. Let me just move to the back. So this focuser has got some nice interesting features. This looks like a camera rotator. Um, and also, instead of like um, thumb screws, there is one here. I think it's for extra safety. It's got like twist locks, so that comes out. And then if I untwist this, sort of non-marring. Oh, not tight enough. And then turn that closed. And I guess you can tighten it up as extra with that thumb screw. So that's pretty snaz. And then We've got the usual sort of finder shoe. Now because I'm going to be doing some solar, I've got a, a 3D printed solar finder here that I'll be popping in. In fact, I did this morning and it worked really well. Okay, here it is. So that was the Altair 130 EDTF. Now, I will be doing a review on that at a later date. I just want to get some images together first and actually get used to using it before I, I, I do a review. So next we'll talk about the Altair DERF sort of filter. Now, that is something that needs to be used on telescopes above 100mm. It's a front-mounted ERF filter and it's for safety and for better images too. So. As this telescope's a 130, definitely falls in the category of needing a front-mounted ERF. So yeah, I'll show you the Altair D ERF. Okay, so we've seen that amazing telescope that Altair have sent me, and because I wanted to do a bit of solar imaging, they also sent me this ERF as well. So what does ERF stand for? It stands for Energy Rejection Filter. Now, when you're using a quark, whether that's like a hydrogen alpha quark or a calcium quark, you are going to want to use an ERF. Now, up to 100mm, your ERF could just be a small sort of UV IR cut filter on the front of your diagonal. But over 100mm, you really should use a front mounted ERF. So that basically, it blocks all the sort of unwanted energy from the sun and stops it building up inside your telescope and potentially causing damage or you know heat currents when you're imaging so your image just isn't all wobbly um, so yeah they've sent me the 130 telescope so they sent me their 140 mil um, DERF sort of tri-band filter and it comes in this great housing it feels really solid you can tell the filters not in there tight um, it's tight enough but you can feel a tiny bit of movement and that ensures that there's sort of no strain on the glass when it's you know getting heated up because it's pointing at the sun and we've got these nice tip screws to stop it damaging your OTA so this they call it the tri-band because it actually sort of 
passes like three sort of wavelengths so you've got hydrogen alpha down at the red end and calcium k and calcium h up at the blue and sort of violet end i'm just using it with hydrogen alpha and i used it for the first time this morning i would never use such a large telescope with such a large aperture without a front mounted erf when doing solar now it's important to say you mustn't use an erf on its own pointing at the sun because you know you will cause serious damage either to your scope camera or your eyes if you're doing visual it must always be used with a blocking sort of etalon and in this case i am using the daystar quark chromosphere so there was a little bit of a mix-up as well and Altair actually sent me the glass <laughs> for this on its own and I was like okay what's going on here and basically they didn't know if they could get uh, both parts to me at the same time so they were like yeah we'll send you the glass and we can pop it in by you, you can pop it in by yourself anyway it actually came all in one piece and so I now have an extra piece of glass which I will be sending back but Nick from Altair great guy that he is he said that I could show it on video so that you can actually see the glass that's in this ERF filter so it's pretty hefty piece of glass I'd say that's about 12 mil thick and yeah it's dielectrically coated it's not dyed or anything you can see these like little sort of marks i assume that's where it's been sort of held in the machine when it's been coated so yeah it's got like a purple sheen or green sheen or blue sheen depending on what angle you look at it yeah that is the glass that's in the ERF filter and I'm now going to package that up because it's going to get sent back to Altair. Cheers guys. Okay so one of the last things we'll talk about, we've still got the camera to go after this, but this is the Daystar Quark. So this is a hydrogen alpha sort of filter. Now it's not like your typical hydrogen alpha filter that you would use for deep sky and in fact you should never ever use one of those for solar imaging because it, you would get injured or your equipment would be damaged. Basically it would be a really really bad idea. So this is the this is a hydrogen alpha quark chromosphere it also comes in like a prominence version as well but i've actually found the chromo works for both like the surface detail of the sun and also prominences on the on the limb as well so this isn't brand new it's, it's a little bit used and worn you can see it was borrowed off a friend thank you um and this end goes into your extension tube or your diagonal and your eyepiece or camera goes in here you can see there's a very deep red color in there so it gets plugged in to a power source and this warms it up and it then gets to its required temperature after about 10 minutes and you can fine tune with this knob here now every time you turn this it then ha you'll notice this light go orange because it's adjusting the temperature and when it's ready to go you you'll see it go green so that's a hydrogen alpha version but they also do different ones for like calcium as well so yeah that's what i'm going to be using and what i use this morning to take the picture at the end of this video so yeah pretty good uh daystar quark chromo and pretty much everybody who does a bit of solar imaging has heard of these or either used one it's either get one of these things or like buy a, a, sol a dedicated solar telescope and yeah seem to see a lot of people with these really nice piece of kit to be honest and one day if I uh, win the lottery I'll probably treat myself to one of these <laughs> 
Luna's decided to join. Um, but yeah, one thing why Quark is so good, it's like an all-in-one package. Uh, it contains like a 4.2 times Barlow to get like a really nice magnification. Um, but yeah, one thing to definitely note is that the Quark shouldn't be used with reflectors. Oh, having a good sniff. It should only be used with refractors. So yeah, if you've got a reflector like a Newtonian or something, this is not going to work. Um, it's for refractors only. Am I bothering you? Hmm? Huh? Oh, don't stop stroking me, is that? She's all hot and bothered. Okay, final piece of kit that we, well, that I'll be using for solar, and I did use this morning, is first off an Altair GP cam. So this one is the Altair GP cam 178M, comes with instructions, a nose piece, which I'll show you how that connects with the tilt adapter. You've got an ST4 cable, a USB 3 cable, because it's a, a USB 3 camera. It's got the USB 3 port there. Okay. 178M USB 3. So nice high speed camera. And a nice big sensor actually. Well, for this size camera. So yeah. How does this connect up with the tilt adapter? I hear you say. So basically, camera screws onto the tilt adapter and then the nose piece screws into the end of the tilt adapter and then that fits in the top of the quark. Now you can loosen off, basically if you have the camera dead on you might see Newton's rings, whereas with this you can tilt the camera slightly just enough to get rid of those rings and then tie it up these thumb screws to keep the camera in place. It's easier said than done when you're trying to do it one handed. There we go. So yeah you can see that's slightly tilted that but when you were imaging with the camera um, on the quark and the telescope and the ERF you would be able to see the Newton's rings and adjust just enough so that they disappear. that's the end of the video um, hopefully you enjoyed seeing how my first sort of solar session with the 130 went this morning I know I didn't do a video at the time um, I wasn't expecting to get any decent images to be honest um, yeah it was really hot outside and I was there under my like dog blanket because I couldn't find another dark like I'd been told to use a dark towel and I was like I haven't even got a dark towel so I was just like yeah what have I got so I found the blanket that the dog tends to use she was just like looking at me as if to say why have you got that over your head anyway yeah so yeah I've shown you the kit that I'm going to be using for some solar 
hopefully I'll get some more videos done on it but regardless I'm going to be doing reviews on all the different pieces of kit that I've shown you in the video today um, I just want to get out there and use them a little bit first um, and get some images so that I'll, when I come back and do the review I can actually give you a full-on review um, weather permitting so as always thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon take care